the next thing is like, what are the different types of content and processes that are being engaged? So we talked about this catalog, glossary, report, data flow, reference data, policy questions, uh, or other kind of issues. So, um, you know, types of things they're doing when they're searching and discovering the reference data. Saying like, does this does this exist? Is it documented? Is it curated or just inventory? Is there like the completeness of the information? What that means is like from a report standpoint, maybe is what we really talk about with this is like, you know, you've got documented the existence of a report and the, you know what it's called and and but the curation part of it is you know are the things that are on that report linked up to your glossary terms that you all agree on is um, you know do you have any kind of clarity on whether or not this is a trusted or valued report and and you know who owns it and all that kind of you know curated information so there are two levels of, of things that people might, might be looking for uh, and then from the perspective of the person doing this searching uh, it, does that answer your questions? You know, is the information up to date? Is it accurate? Is it complete? Uh, do I know who the steward owner is? And so these are the things that people will be kind of asking themselves as they're looking at the various content. And then if not, then they might submit a request. And that request, you know, depending on what they were doing, could be, hey, I need a new report or a new ETL process. I'm searching for a report and I couldn't find it and I need to request one. You know, or I found a report, but it's not exactly what I want. I want to request a change to it. You know, or I did find a report, it was documented, but it was only just like shallow inventory information. I really need it curated. I need, I need some explanation on, on what this works, how it's calculated. I just don't understand it. I need more information from a curation standpoint. Or maybe I want to understand how to get access to it or request access to it. You know, or maybe there's a definition that I'm looking at, a glossary term that I, I need a new one. You know, Can I find that glossary term? If not, I want to request a new one or I want to maybe request a change to the one that's there. Maybe I've got a quality rule I want to create or, or a reported data quality issue or look at an existing quality rule and make a modification to it. Maybe I'm looking to see if the, you know, if we've got documented the list of valid values or what are, you know, status codes. You know, I'm looking for our employee status values and what they mean and what we agree on and how they map between systems. And if you can find it, great. If not, I might request it or I may want to add a reference data value. Um, I may be looking to see about the existence of a data system, which data systems are out there for certain types of functionality. And if I find it, I want to get access to it. Or maybe I know about that data system, but I want to understand how to get access to it. Maybe there's a report out there that I you know, want to get a, a run of or you know, I want to request someone run that report and get me something. Or maybe there's a report that it exists and I say, hey, we need to do a review of this because I think the standards have changed this year. So, you know, I need to request kind of a review of a report, you know, or whatever. So there's all sorts of issues. So the challenge here is when we talk about points of engagement, there isn't sort of one do it this way because all of these different types of questions may have different points of entry, you know, or, or you know, ways to, to access it. But the, the, the main key here is uh, you know, when you're thinking about these concepts, to think about how do you make it as simple as possible and as obvious as possible for people who are trying to do these things to search and reference and then request the stuff to to um, incorporate this activity into what they're doing right now or the way that they work day to day, right? And, and so we'll, we'll come to the main the main question is: Does that mean like? knowing about and going into the data cookbook and taking that action in the data cookbook or, or you've got some other tool doing that or does that mean pushing out to where they are right now like in a reporting tool or in your website or in your ticketing system or whatever uh sort of a um a place to search or a form to submit or, or information there that pulls them into the cookbook or pushes the content from the cookbook out to where they're working so that they can engage as, as quickly as, as possible. And if you get your data consumers and requesters engaged in the cookbook generating requests, that is going to drive, dramatically drive your engagement of your subject matter experts and your stewards who are needing to process this request. And it is going to have them creating more content because they're getting requests coming in to them from a customer rather than some you know, hypothetical list of definitions or, or reports they need to curate. But also it's gonna dramatically improve their employee satisfaction in those activities because they know that what they're doing is responding to an actual issue and an actual question within your organization. And in reality, maybe many of those people 
are already doing this type of thing right now without a tool like the cookbook, um, but very informally where people are picking up the phone or they're calling them or they're emailing them and asking these questions. And the difference between that and what you might be doing now in a cookbook if you're doing it is that if people were just calling up or asking informal um, questions outside of a process, you're not capturing that information for the future, right? So now we're just saying, hey, we're gonna kind of take this request process that maybe is happening informally and directly, and we're gonna make it slightly more formal through the cookbook. And, th and because of that, the responses and the information and the knowledge about your data that's generated from this request will get captured uh, in the system moving forward. That's the most critical point. How do you insert into your current processes or new processes the capture of this knowledge so that it both accelerates and, and um, helps with searching that people don't have to, you know, have three different people ask the same question and get, you know, three different answers uh, from scratch each time, uh, only the first time you do that, but also reduces the time of the, um, of the expert to say, A, they're only focusing their energy on the things that people are asking about, and B, you know, if they're already answering that question, it's just a marginal additional effort for them to, to, to get it put into the knowledge base each time. Right. So who are these different types of people? And you know, we've kind of gone through this, uh, we talked about this in the steward thing, all the different types of folks that can engage. And I put this up here just, to, just so you can think about the roles and how they're in dealing with your data and therefore where is the best way to, and what is the best way for them to engage in this, in this content. Um, uh, and in the, in, even within those roles, you've got sort of different levels of like expertise and access. So you might have casual or infrequent users of this of 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 data or this content, or very active users. You may have internal pe people within your organization or external people in the organization. There's different ways you might to interact with them. You might have people who are very data governance and formally understand the concept of glossary and catalogs and all that kind of stuff. Or you might have people who don't even know what that means at all, right? Uh, again, data consumers, people who are um, you know, requesting and accessing data, and then your, your creators or the experts them, themselves, and the, the way that they're gonna deal with this. Um, authors and curators, so people who are writing definitions and, and curating information, which also is sort of in this data creators maybe. And then approvers, maybe they're not, they're just gonna be oversight and review. Um, you've got users who are stewards or experts or data system owners or whatever, who have, who are bought in and believe in the concepts here say like, hey, you know, I understand the value of, of getting this stuff documented and I understand the value of, of good data governance. And, and you know, those are gonna be relatively easy, but you probably also have within your organization people who are not bought into that. And they, you know, their maybe immediate reaction is like, oh, you know, why are you giving me more documentation effort to do or what should I do? So thinking about how to, simplify things for, for, for both of these people, but um, you know, understanding how to break through the barriers of those people who don't have buy-in. You're gonna have new people come in your organization who are untrained in your tool and, uh, and then experienced users who are. So this is a really good thing to think about and, and it's hard to sometimes put yourself, you know, think too really far ahead here, but if you get a tool like the Data Cookbook and you, you know, implement it and you do this like big marketing campaign and training across your whole organization saying, we have this new knowledge base repository for information around your data. Here's how you access it. This is how you get to it. And, and, and you know, train people on how to get to this solution. And then, but don't like embed or, you know, create links and what they're doing right now that will drive them there. If it's just they have to remember about this tool and all that, you know, many of those people, they're not going to have a data question for maybe six months or 12 months, you know, and are they going to be like, what was that thing? The data what book, the what, what, the what, who book? Um, and they're not, they're not going to remember how to find it. And plus you're going to have new people. So if, if you're relying on training and reminders to go use this other tool, then it's, it's not going to be helpful. So, you know, it's like with a help desk system, you might have something like right on your website or on their employee handbook or in something else. It's like, here is where the help desk is. Or maybe there's even a shortcut on your phone or something to get to it. These are things that, that um, you, know, you want to think about how to engage here. Uh, you also have functional users and technical users. You have to think about how that, you, know, you don't want to have 
like the only way that people engage is come and look at something that's just overwhelming to them technically if they um, are purely functional and, and vice versa you don't have people to come in who are technical users and can't seem to find the you know the thing we I always say that you want people to find their home in the catalog that's their sort of their knowledge so if you're a technical person you know they're going to want to be able to access and get into things where it's like they're looking at the tables and columns if they're a functional user maybe they have a different points of entry um, you know, and then from a governance standpoint, you might have different roles on that. You're an active steward or just someone who's like an oversight role. So these are the types of things you want to think about in terms of engagement. And then I know it like doesn't seem really helpful to say right now, like here's a bunch of things you have to think about, but it is it is important that you know, there's gonna be some some you know kind of universal tricks to to make this work, but it is it, you know, as you start building up you know, more and more types of ways that you want to have people access this content to solve more and more problems in your organization, you do want to consider are we, are we setting this up for success with people who are, you know, either bought in or not bought in or they're, you know, internal or external or whatever. All right. Um, so the next thing to ask with these people is like, what are they doing now in their existing processes and tools when they encounter uh, the need to engage? So, it's like if I'm the example of because I'm looking at a report and I'm like, I don't understand this report. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm in this process. So I, I'm working in this tool and this is where I have this question. So the question is, how would you in, insert this content uh, engagement in the simplest way possible into their current process? So um, I'm looking at your report and I want to understand what it means. And it, the, the simplest way possible, which I'll show you in a second when we go to the demo here, is to have a little button or a click that makes it pops that information right in the report, as opposed to um, actually, why don't I go ahead and quickly show that example? Here I am looking at this Tableau report, and I've got a little button down here that has popped up that says, "Hey, this report is documented." When I click on it, it's going to pull up the documentation for this report right here, right? So that is an example of pushing it out. I didn't need to know what the cookbook was or whatever. Now I could go into the cookbook and do that searching, but if this wasn't here. You know, maybe I could have a link there, or maybe I could have something at the top that says, do you have a question on this report? I mean, there's levels of simplicity you can do. This is one of the most simple, just like literally one button press here that, takes, that pops up the documentation, right? Um, but if I had to remember, what's that website? How do I get to it? Datacookbook.com, you know, and then go into it that way, uh, it's gonna be less likely for me to go search and find that information if I 